That's the end of the old hag. The voice was unmistakably Sheila's. It was still dark outside, 4 a.m. What could Sheila be doing in the bathroom at such an early hour? She must be talking about me when she says old hag. Terrified, I quickly returned to bed. It was a good thing I woke up just then. Otherwise, I would have fallen into Sheila's trap. I never thought Sheila would go that far. I think realizing her plan was where her luck ran out. I'm Amelia Weston, 65 years old. I live a peaceful life with my husband, Randy, who retired last year. Technically, our 32-year-old son, Michael, also lives with us, but he seems busy with work and play. He's hardly ever home, just comes back to sleep. It's worrisome that he has an experience doing household chores even in his 30s, so I've suggested he move out on his own a few times, but he refused, saying, Why? I only sleep here. It's a waste to pay rent. Michael, always out having fun. You were so much more responsible at his age. I complained to Randy, who just chuckled. Well, having many friends is a good thing. I suppose, but with this pace, marriage seems far off for him. Randy agreed, and we both laughed. However, by the end of that year, Michael introduced us to a woman saying he wanted to marry her. If he's made up his mind, we wouldn't object. After meeting her, the two quickly got married. She, Sheila, is 10 years younger than Michael, only 22. I was shocked by her age when Michael told us. At first, I thought she looked like a small animal. Short stature, big eyes, and quite adorable. More importantly, the love she showed while talking to Michael was evident. It seemed like she was the one pushing for the marriage. Michael is so lucky to be loved so much by Sheila. Our son being deeply loved by his partner is the best thing for a parent. I meant it in a good way, but Sheila glared at me. Amaya, stop making snide remarks. What? I've thought this for a while, but you are excessively caring towards Michael, overbearing even. Really? I never meant to be overbearing. Actually, when Michael was out and about, I just told him, don't bother others. Other than that, I left him be. I did ask for updates about dinner plans, but didn't interfere in his other activities, nor did I frequently contact him. Yet Sheila says I cared too much. He's your only son, and I get that he's precious to you, but once he's married to me, he became part of my family. I'm the one closest to him now. Well, that's comforting. I had heard from Michael beforehand that she was quite possessive, but I never imagined she would be jealous of me, his mother. I guess she really loves Michael. He might have married someone a bit peculiar, but she's a good person. I reassured myself, thinking, They're newlyweds. They'll settle down in time. Randy and I even laughed it off, thinking it was sweet. However, even after a year, then two, Sheila never let her guard down. At dinner, she always sat next to Michael, and she never left his side, not even for a second when they were out. It must be hard for Michael. I wonder what will happen when they have kids. Randy and I were genuinely concerned. Three years after Michael and Sheila got married, Randy passed away. He wet so suddenly, even in his 60s. It was incredibly lonely, but friends and neighbors often checked in on me. Thanks to them, I recovered faster than I expected. Concerned about me living alone in the big house, Michael started visiting more often. But it was only about three times a year. I don't think that's too often. But someone wasn't amused by this. Sheila. I get that you're lonely since Randy's gone, but don't drag us into it. I never once asked him to come. It's great when he visits, but I've never forced him. I told Sheila just that. What? Stop playing the victim. Acting all lonely on purpose. Aren't you ashamed to be so dependent on your son at your age? Dependent? And don't you even think about moving in with us. You'll disrupt our newlywed life. I couldn't keep quiet after hearing this. When Sheila went to take a shower, I called Michael aside. Could you please talk to Sheila? It hurts to always be painted as the bad guy. The bad guy? You don't know? When I relayed everything Sheila told me, Michael was genuinely shocked. Did Sheila really do that? Yes, she did. I get tired too, and I don't want things to get awkward between you two. You both should head back to your home soon. Michael paused for a moment, then replied, All right, we'll leave in another two or three days. Considering Sheila's attitude towards me, I wish they would leave today, but I accepted and replied, Okay, I understand. That evening at dinner, Michael made a shocking suggestion. Mom, why don't you move close to us? What? We had just talked about this. 
What was Michael thinking? Seeing me flustered, Michael began to explain. You're still active and strong now, but you're not getting any younger, Mom. I worry about you living alone. Michael. I felt Sheila's glaring eyes on me, but I chose to ignore them. Thank you. I appreciate the sentiment, but I can't leave this house. It holds memories of my time with Randy. Besides, I have plenty of people who can help if I need it. Michael seemed a bit unsatisfied with my response. I get where you're coming from, Mom. I'll think about it some more. You should too. Yes, thank you. Touched by Michael's unexpected concern, I drifted off to sleep that night. The next morning, I woke up and saw that it was only 4 a.m. It was still pitch dark outside. I got out of bed to use the restroom. Huh? While walking down the hallway, I heard a noise. What could it be at this hour? Curious and a bit cautious, I followed the sound. It was coming from the bathroom. Peeking gently into the bathroom, I saw a silhouette and the light of a mobile phone in the darkness. Then I heard a faint voice saying, This is the end of the old hag. That mocking laughter was unmistakably Sheila's. What could she be doing in the bathroom at this hour? She must have been referring to me as the old hag. Scared, I quickly returned to my room and got into bed. Two hours later at 6 a.m., driven by curiosity, I went back to the bathroom and then bumped into Sheila. Oh, Emily, good morning. Good morning, you're up early. She usually wouldn't rise until breakfast was ready. Noticing my suspicion, Sheila gave a breezy laugh. I'm leaving tomorrow, so I thought I'd clean the place today as a thank you for letting me stay. Thanks, but you really don't have to. No, it's the least I can do. Oh, please don't go into the bathroom now. I'm cleaning it. Feeling the pressure from Sheila's assertiveness, I just nodded. For the entire day, I was kept away from the bathroom on Sheila's orders. After dinner, while tidying up, Sheila quietly approached. Emily, I'll take it from here. You can go take a shower. But why? She had never offered to help before. And now this? It puzzled me more than pleased. Just relax. How about soaking in the bathtub? I've prepared it for you. Sheila said with a broad grin. Michael even chimed in. Wow, Sheila's being so kind. And laughed. However, seeing that I hesitated, Sheila grabbed my hand and led me to the bathroom. Look, I've prepared aromatic candles for you. Oh, how beautiful. Several aromatic candles adorned the dimmed bathroom. Their faint glow looked magical. Just hop in like this without turning on the lights. But the ambience reduces the relaxation from the aroma, she said and left wishing. Enjoy your bath. Am I overthinking? Is this just Sheila being nice? Lost in thought, my eye suddenly caught sight of the bathtub, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. What is this? I instinctively turned on the bathroom light, and there it was, clear as day. The bathtub was filled with a black liquid. Bath salt? But I've never seen this color before. There's no way I'm getting into that bath, that color. Sheila's actions are concerning. Feeling uneasy, I quietly stepped out of the bathroom. Looking around, only Michael was in the living room. I discreetly approached Michael. Michael, where's Sheila? She went out, seemed in a good mood. This is my chance. Can you come with me for a sec? I took Michael back to the bathroom. Look at this. Whoa, that's a wild color, right? I don't really want to get in it, but she went through all this effort. It'd be bad just to take a shower, wouldn't it? Michael nodded. Yeah. Then I'll go first. Wait, what? It's probably just bath salt. But with this color, it's hard to get in. If I prove it doesn't stain the skin, you'll feel relieved, right, Mom? I gratefully accepted Michael's offer. When I went back to the kitchen alone, the dishes were still piled in the sink. I wonder where Sheila went. As I was rolling up my sleeves to wash the dishes, I heard a noise from the entrance. Sheila, who had just returned home, saw me and exclaimed, Emily, why aren't you in the bath? Well, Michael said he wanted to go first. As we spoke, a shout came from the bathroom. Sheila rushed into the bathroom with a panicked expression. I followed right behind her. Michael, are you okay? As Sheila flung open the bathroom door, Michael was there, rinsing him off with the shower. Sheila, what is this? It smells so bad. Um, it's, uh... Oh, come on, just close the door. We'll talk when I'm out. 
After being scolded by Michael, Sheila closed the door with a downtrodden look. So, what was that all about? After finishing his shower, Michael confronted Sheila. Well, it's not exactly... It's not a bath salt, is it? That thing smelled terrible. I feel like the smell is still there. I'm, I'm sorry. So, what's with the black stuff? Sheila, with a pale face, didn't answer and looked down. Sheila! Upon hearing her name, Sheila shuddered. She hesitantly replied, It's squid ink. What? That black stuff, it's squid ink. Both Michael and I exchanged surprised looks. Sheila, why would you use squid ink? I thought it might be healthy, Sheila said, avoiding our eyes. Michael glared at Sheila. Then you try getting in now. <laughs> I'd rather not. Sheila's words from this morning echo in my head. A suspicion suddenly arises within me. Could it be because I mentioned I'm allergic to squid? Sheila froze at my words. It seems I was right on the mark. Come to think of it, I told Sheila about my squid allergy in our casual chat the day before yesterday. Knowing my allergy, Sheila prepared a bathtub filled with squid ink. My head ached at the thought of such a bizarre idea. What's the deal with that? Is this some sort of cruel joke? It's not what you think. I just wanted to help Amelia relax. Sheila buried her face in her hands and began to cry. Is she thinking that crying will solve this? But I won't let it slide. So this was the old hag thing you were talking about? What are you talking about? Wait, Amelia. Sheila tried to stop me, her tears pausing, but I continued on. I heard what you said in the bathroom around four this morning. You were awake, Amelia? Sheila's eyes widened, her hand flying to her mouth. This is clear act of malice after all. But Michael always favors you. He's always worried about you. I was just so jealous. Sheila tried to deflect with a barrage of excuses. Basically, she was just jealous as always. Michael sighed heavily, rubbing his forehead. I was skeptical when I heard from Mom, but it seems her story was true. What? Sheila stared at us, her face pale. What did you tell Michael, Amelia? I was dumbfounded by her audacity. Blaming me after what she's done? How foolish can she be? I'm sure Michael felt the same, looking at Sheila with disbelief. That's enough. You've never been one to reflect on your actions. I'm done. Michael! I smile spread across Sheila's face, perhaps thinking she was forgiven. But in the next moment, Michael's words shattered that, Let's get a divorce. What? Sheila stood still, a frozen smile on her face. Wait, Michael, why? How did it come to this? This doesn't make any sense. It makes perfect sense. You tried to hurt mom. Do you even understand what you've done? Sheila paused for a moment, but soon spoke up. But in the end, Amelia didn't go in. It was just an attempt, so I'm innocent. Michael shook his head at Sheila's protest. Do you really think it's that simple? It was only an attempt because mom noticed, and I hate people who scheme behind the scenes. That's cruel. Sheila rushed over to Michael and clutched at his shirt, but he quickly pushed her away. So you're choosing Amelia over me? I wish she'd stop playing the victim. Seeing Michael not responding, clearly annoyed, I spoke up. I can't stand to watch this, Sheila. Sheila glared sharply at me. Did Michael ever compare us? Did he even ever belittle me in comparison to you in cooking or household chores? Well, no. At least from Michael, I've only ever heard good things about you. He must have truly cared for you. Sheila glanced at Michael, who nodded without looking up. Yes, I never once saw you as a replacement for mom, and I never compared. I genuinely liked you, Sheila. But then... But it's over now. Trying to hurt mom with lies? It's just malicious. It could have been disastrous, Michael said with finality. Sheila's face turned bright red as she trembled with anger. How could you both accuse me like this? It's unfair. It seemed like talking to her was pointless. We decided to call Sheila's parents and ask them to come and pick her up. When they arrived, she was still yelling... This isn't over! But they took her away, almost dragging her. Later, a meeting was held with Sheila's parents present. Luckily, they were reasonable people. After we explained the situation, they looked pale and apologized profusely. Yet they seemed overly indulgent with their daughter and pleaded in unison. Please don't divorce her! Apparently, Sheila was deeply infatuated with Michael, and they were worried about what she might do if they split. We promise we'll ensure this doesn't happen again. 
Sheila remained silent, looking down. I could tell that Sheila genuinely liked Michael. Perhaps that's why she acted out of jealousy towards me. A little resentment is one thing, but after this incident, I can't just forgive and forget. I'm a parent too. I understand how you both feel, but did you really listen? One wrong move and I might not be here now. Sheila's parents looked up and gave a wry smile. That's a bit exaggerated. We admit our daughter did something foolish, but it wasn't that severe. Allergies are not a joke. It's not just a prank. Sheila knew about my allergy and still acted out. She probably did it because she was upset I might live near Michael. When I looked at Sheila, our eyes met. She quickly looked away. She knew exactly what would have happened if I had gotten into that bathtub. I feel the same as my mother. I can't go back to how things were with Sheila. I'll always be reminded of this incident, Michael said, looking at Sheila. I'd rather break up now before I get more disappointed in her. Sheila burst into tears again. Give me a chance. We might be able to work things out. It's impossible. What if we have kids and you get jealous of them? The mere thought terrifies me. Michael apologized deeply to Sheila's parents. Please, divorce. Sheila's parents seemed taken aback, but they probably realized reconciliation was impossible after seeing our firm stance. They began to persuade their daughter. Still, Sheila refused to accept the divorce. If you go that far, I'll demand a larger settlement. Are you ready to pay a huge amount? Stop it! Sheila, just give up! Ignoring her parents, her hair disheveled, she shouted, No, I won't let go! What about the compensation? Can you afford it? We wouldn't backtrack on the divorce just because of a demand for compensation. Is she so confused that she doesn't even get that? Most importantly, we haven't done anything to warrant such a demand. On what grounds would you demand extra compensation? Um, infidelity, perhaps? Making up lies won't work in your favor. If you play that game, we can play too. Realizing my determination, Sheila's parents stepped in hurriedly. Seems they judged that a conversation was impossible. We'll persuade her to agree to the divorce. Thank you. And so, our conversation with Sheila ended. The last time we saw Sheila, she looked pitiable with her hair and face disheveled. I couldn't sense any of the charm she once had. Thanks to the efforts of Sheila's parents, the divorce went through. Relieved, Michael and I sighed. She might not have been a bad person, but she wasn't a good one either. Michael, you've always had bad luck with women. We laughed it off. By the way, Sheila moved back to her parents' home and now lives under their watchful eye. She tried everything from self-improvement to working at nightclubs, all to get back together with Michael. Because of that, she spent too much and is now chased by debts. I do feel a bit sorry thinking about her parents. Michael and I started living together again. He seems to have a wide circle of friends as always and goes out often. However, he comes home earlier than before and has become more consistent with his communication. I need to start taking life a bit more seriously. That's what he said. He's back to being single, so maybe he's been doing some soul searching. He's even started to chip in with household chores. As for me... With the help of those around me, I'm living a peaceful life just like before. Michael's divorce was unexpected, but thanks to him helping around the house, I've had more time for myself. Even at this age, I'm thinking about picking up a new hobby, and I've been talking about it with my friends. I want to enjoy the rest of my life a bit more before Randy comes to take me away. <laughs>